Hi everyone, and welcome to this introduction video to Play Pro Studio. Why Play Pro Studio needs an intro video? Simple, because it does a lot. It also features a very unique UI, which is designed to let you work incredibly fast with tons of media. I'll explain the UI and how to work with it in just a sec. Don't worry, it's really easy. But what is it now that Play Pro Studio does? It's a player, right? Well, a player with a bunch of extras. Play Pro can organize your footage, not only in different timelines, but even inside any given timeline. It can play back your footage, obviously. Not only ProRes RAW, but actually any camera format on the market. It can play out full screen to a second monitor attached to your GPU, but also via SDI and even NDI over the network and into other apps like Zoom for instance. You can use it to quickly compare different shots and takes, and it allows you to quickly apply and even combine your LUTs. But even more so, Play Pro Studio allows you to color grade your footage manually using the color wheels and export a new LUT from that grade. It offers scopes and annotation features so you can review and QC footage and mark up things in the picture, all of which you can then export as an HTML or PDF report. But Play Pro Studio does more than just show an image. It reads any and all metadata from the source files. You can then also export all this as either a report or an ALE if you want to import the metadata into any third-party application. Speaking of reports, you can also use Play Pro Studio to run an HDR analysis on your footage and create an HDR report from that. You can use it to calibrate your reference monitors using Light Illusion's color space software, and of course you can transcode your footage to H.264, H.265 and ProRes on both macOS and Windows and convert ProRes RAW footage to Cinema DNG. Quite a bunch of stuff Play Pro Studio can help you with. Now let's take a look at the UI and how to navigate it. When starting the software for the first time, it comes up like this. At the bottom you can find two tabs, Construct and Player. In the Player tab you can look at your footage, whilst in the Construct tab you can manage it. Let's start here. Over here on the left is the project tree, where you can create timelines, rename them, and delete them again. At the top you can switch to the metadata tab and fill in the details. This is only used when exporting a report from Play Pro Studio. Let's import some footage by hitting the Import Clips button here in the center. Alright. On the right side we have the metadata stack, which shows you all on any piece of metadata off the selected clip. Much more than you can find in other players. Now as you can see, our timeline is basically a storyboard with one clip after another. But it features these so-called slots which let us stack clips on top of another. This is super helpful when creating versions of clips or wanting to compare different takes of the same shot. More on that in a bit. In the lower half we have access to the settings on the far left. Here you can enable dual head output if you have a second monitor attached to the graphics card or if you're using a video I.O. card from AJA, Blackmagic or Bluefish444, you can configure your SDI output. Note that Play Pro Studio also supports NDI output if you want to feed your image into Zoom or any other app via the network. Over here we have various tools to calibrate our reference monitor using Light Illusion Color Space, and on the far right we have all our export options. Most importantly Render, Backup, and reports. Now let's jump into the player tab. The two most important hotkeys in here are alt and drag up and down to zoom and space drag to pan the image in the viewport. This allows us to really inspect every aspect of the image. If you encounter numeric parameter fields like this, changing a parameter works by clicking into it and dialing around it, just like turning an encoder. You can also click into it to pop up the calculator and then enter a new value or reset it to its default. Control click will also reset it. From the top menu bar we can call up our scopes, the pan zoom tool to navigate in the viewport and the annotate tool. This allows us to draw on the frame either for just the given frame or across the entire clip. 
All annotations can of course be exported as a report from the construct tab later on. To disable the annotation overlay, hit the pen icon here in the viewport controls. Next, we have a magnifying glass which allows us to inspect pixel values, shown up here. The audio panel gives us a simple mix of audio monitoring, waveform display and settings for the audio output device. You can always enable and disable audio output down here with the speaker icon. And of course, the snapshot button pulls a snapshot of the current frame. In the player tab, we also have a right side stack. You can switch between metadata tab, which we already know from the construct, and the version stack. The metadata stack in here, however, lets us add text notes to any shot. We can pick a color and write some text. To add another note, first hit the plus button, then type in the text and choose the color. When scrubbing through the mini timeline, PlayPro Studio will always display the note nearest to the cursor. Down here we can switch from shot navigation to annotation navigation. We can even choose to only consider certain colors of notes. In annotation navigation mode, the hotkeys control and left right arrow, or on the Mac command and left right arrow, now jump from note to note instead of shot to shot. Back to our right side stack. The version stack is incredibly useful when comparing different takes of a shot or grades. Let me jump into the color menu and make this clip a little warmer. Great. Now I create a version, reset it and make it blue. I can now hit play and switch back and forth to compare them. Better yet, using these two buttons or hotkeys S and D, I can jump into dual or split view mode and then simply drag and drop the version I'm currently not seeing into the right side, like this. Whilst in split or dual view mode, I can also toggle the grade on and off for any of the two sides or unlink both views in order to scale them independently. Let me quickly jump back to the Construct tab. As you can see, the version shot is also displayed here in its corresponding slot. Important note, when rendering out to any format, only the bottom shots will be considered. Everything else is just a version. You can also compare any two shots that are not necessarily versions. For that, simply Ctrl or Command select them, right click and choose Compare. Now, let's continue with the player tab. In the lower part of the UI, we can find six main menus. The first menu shows settings of the underlying footage itself. In the case of ProRes raw material, it shows all the debayering options. For other raw formats, it shows their respective debayer options and so on. The media menu holds general information and settings for each clip, like resolution, frame rate and orientation. Framing should be self-explanatory and the color menu allows us to color grade our footage using different sets of wheels and sliders. The LUT menu is especially interesting. It not only lets us load a LUT, but it even allows us to cycle through all LUTs in any given folder, which is super handy when trying out different looks. If you want to copy any grade, whether it's dialed in or comes through a LUT to other shots, you have the copy and paste buttons over here. Let me copy this grade, go to the next shot and hit paste. As you can see, a little menu popped up, allowing us to choose which properties we want to paste. I'll leave it all enabled for now. We can now either just hit paste and be done, or we can hit paste forward. In that case, Play Pro Studio will copy the grade forward to all shots in our timeline. If we want to limit the range of the copy forward action, we can simply set an out point here and it will then only copy forward until it hits the out point. Note that you can combine your manual grade and the LUT you're using and even export both as a new LUT again by hitting the save button down here. However, before you export any 3D LUTs, make sure your export settings here in the settings menu are correctly adapted to suit the target app, camera or recorder that you want to load the LUT into. Once you then hit the save button, PlayPro Studio lets you select which LUT type you want to export. 
In most cases, you either want 3DL or a Qplot. Lastly, we have the AV Trim menu. It has two functions. First, it lets you load external audio onto any given shot. If both audio and video have timecode, it will even sync it automatically. If not, you can use the same slip parameter to sync it manually, or use the waveform display in the audio panel to slip it millisecond accurate. The other function is that it allows you to shorten any clip by dialing in the in and out points. Note that inside the calculator you can switch to timecode and enter that if needed. Alternatively, you can simply scrub on the mini timeline and use the set buttons to set in and out points at playhead position. This helps if you want to transcode only a certain range of the source shot and not the full clip. Last menu to check out in this video is the settings menu. Apart from the 3D LUT export settings, we have three other menus in here that are quite important. Let's look at the guides menu first. In here, we can activate any kind of guide or configure our own in terms of blanking, action and tidal safe frame lines. This is especially helpful for broadcast QC. In the monitor settings we can configure color management for any monitor or SDI NDI output we have enabled. It also allows us to load display LUTs, like a calibration LUT for a specific monitor or enable guides on certain outputs. In the video format tab we can set scaling. If, for instance, we are playing a 6K clip on a UHD monitor, we want to set this output to scale to fit width in order to see the full 6K image on our UHD monitor. The video I/O menu pops up the same dialog we already know from the construct settings. This is simply a shortcut to it so we can quickly configure our video I/O from inside the player. The last menu is profile. This you basically only need if footage is not playing back in real time. Load a shot that is longer than 500 frames and hit start. Play Pro Studio will now perform a number of tests and at the end allow you to save the profile as a text doc which you can then send to support at assimilateinc.com. And we'll examine it. All tests can also be executed separately via the buttons on the right. Lastly, for all hotkeys throughout the software you can hit the question mark button down here or simply hit hotkey H for help. This was a quick tour through the UI of Play Pro Studio. I hope this gave you a good overview of all functions it ships with. For backup and offloading footage from your record media, as well as transcoding ProRes raw material to conventional ProRes and Cinema DNG, we have created separate tutorials which focus on these topics. Check out the other videos on Play Pro Studio on our YouTube channel and stay tuned. Bye!